Hello everyone, Coach Lockie here. In today's video we're going to be talking about grips and the different kinds and whether there's a right or wrong, wrist angles and shaft lean and the matchup of the three to give you as many golf shots as possible on that golf course to try and help you lower your golf scores. Before we shoot to Honiton though, I need to have a little beard trim and I need to do a little giveaway. So shall I have a little rummage in my goodie bag? For today's giveaway, I have three Callaway Tour Authentic size small leather golf gloves. Apparently my glove size is now size medium after it being size small for 20 odd years, but hey, that gives you a chance to win these three golf gloves, people. And if you wanna win them, I want you to hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and also, lastly, in the comments down below, I want to know if you've ever had a golf lesson before and what part of the game you had it on. Do all those three things, and these three things could be yours. Right, quick little beard trim, and let's head off to Honiton. We are in the studio. Should we talk grips to start with? So personally, I don't think that there is a correct grip. Obviously, you've got three different types generally. You've got an interlocking, you've got overlapping, and you've got 10 finger baseball grip. I don't personally think that one's better than the other. You might find that you get more swing speed out of a baseball grip or something like that that might be personal to you. But personally, for me, I don't think one's better than the other. And I have all sorts of those grips coming in to the studio. How you place your hands on the grip though will affect things. So a neutral grip, you're going to have the club going down into the bottom of your palm. You're going to put your thumb across the top into the middle of the grip and you're going to see around two knuckles on this lead hand. A weaker grip, you'd only see sort of one or half a knuckle. Strong grip, you can see up to all four knuckles look. And that applies whether you're a baseball grip, interlocking or overlapping. So if I go neutral grip on my lead hand here and see sort of two knuckles, my bottom hand, you're going to make a V shape here in your hand and that's going to point towards your right shorter shoulder. And you you can do that with both hands via my lead hand here as well both of those pointing towards my right shoulder that's what i'd class as a neutral grip the strong grip also with the bottom hand sort of four knuckles on this top lead hand here bottom you're going to be able to see fingers the v is going to be pointing well past your body and the right hand's kind of underneath the grip weak one knuckle no knuckles in this lead hand and grip way over the top on this bottom hand, V pointing towards the left part of your body. There are your three different types of grip. And I don't think that there's a right or wrong with any of them. You can play golf with a weak grip. Look, really weak, one knuckle, aiming up the left, hit my shot, coming back to target. Like, I can play golf like that. And the opposite, strong grip, aiming up the right, drawing it back. Oh, God. Maybe I'll play golf like that. And a neutral grip as well. Aiming pretty straight, neutral grip, two knuckles. Pretty straight ball flight, little feather fade down to the right, but pretty neutral. So personally, I don't think that there's a right or wrong. Understanding your grip is the most important. Let me go a bit further. So neutral grip, two knuckles on my lead hand, bottom hand in a nice neutral spot. In my swing, my wrist can move a certain amount. So I can cup it, I can bow it, which is twisting the face look and changing the loft and whether it's open or closed. And with a neutral grip, I can go either way a certain amount. So neutral grip, I can go to here, I can bow my wrist and it twists it a lot. I can cut my wrist and it twists it the other way and adds loads of loft and opens the face. I have that variation. I can hit high, I can hit low, I can hit fades, I can hit draws. But if you've got one of these extreme grips, like a four knuckler strong grip, I swing it back to here. I can bow my wrist still. Look at the twist in that club. But if I go four knuckles and try and open it, look, I can't. So I'm limiting myself by having that really strong grip. Same as the other extreme with a really weak grip. I half a knuckle it, for instance, and have my bottom hand way over the top. I swing back. I can't bow my wrist anymore. Like that's done, but I can easily cup it 
and add loads of loft. The extreme grips are limiting you. If you're a weak gripper trying to hit it low, you're gonna struggle. You can't bow your wrist that much to take enough loft off. So you're gonna have to find another weapon. For instance, clubbing up. Instead of hitting a seven iron, hit a five iron. If you're a strong gripper trying to hit it high and add loft, you're gonna struggle. So you're gonna have to change club. And instead of hitting a seven, you're gonna have to hit an eight. But then you might not reach. These are what are limiting you. Whereas a neutral grip, two knuckles, bottom hand in a nice spot. I can bow my wrist a little bit. I can cup it a little bit. It's all good, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna bow it a little bit and hit a bit of a draw. Now I'm gonna bow it even more and hit a really low draw. Two knuckles still, still a neutral grip. Really bow that wrist and hit a lower draw. Look at the variation. And neutral grip, let's hit one more. Add some loft and hit it nice and high. Cut my wrist, add a bit of cut in there, look. Now I've got a high fade. And if I four knuckle strong grip, try and hit it high, like I'm having to do a lot of work to get that loft onto the golf club. I'm gonna start catching it heavy. So I can only do so much with my height look. And if we look at the number on the last two, look, 38 peak height compared to 27. I know I've hit it a little bit shorter, but that's also what's limiting me with that strong grip trying to hit it high. I can't get that speed up to do what I was doing with my other um, neutral grip hitting it high. 92 miles an hour club head speed compared to 81. It's limiting me. I can't get that height with that strong grip. So is there a right or wrong grip? No. Is there possibly a better grip for you to be able to give you more options out on a golf course? I would say yes, the more neutral grip allows you to hit the ball high, allows you to hit it low also. Remember though, the more extremes you go, whether it's strong or weak, there are ways of getting that ball around the golf course too. You just need to find them. Like I said, hitting a ball low with a really weak grip is hard. So clubbing up, swinging easier, getting that ball fly down will work for you and I want to talk about one other thing as well so with all of these grips that you can put on the golf club all of these wrist angles that you can put into the golf swing as well to give you that variation because you think about it you want a window you want to be able to hit low draw low fade low straight medium draw medium fade medium straight high draw, high fade, high straight. You want that window and you want to be able to hit each window. And with a neutral grip, this is where this becomes a lot easier. Let's talk a bit of shaft lean. So once you've got your neutral grip and you've got an idea of how to use wrist angles, bowing and cupping, flexion and extension, if you want to call it that, you want to start thinking about how you're delivering your handle at impact also. This is basically how I'm trying to hit draws and fades. So neutral grip, if you want to draw it at a normal height, you're going to put your normal wrist angle in, flat lead wrist, flat at the top, and then you're going to be catching the club up and feeling like this club overtakes. If you want to hit a fade, you're going to go flat lead wrist, flat lead wrist, and then deliver the handle forward of the club head. So playing around with how you deliver that handle at impact will change your ball flights. So I'm going to go normal grip, normal wrist angles, deliver that handle forward and try and hit a normal height little cut. There it is. That's probably about 30 peak height and a little cut hitting the line. I want to see if I got my peak height right or not. Table, oh, 32, bit high. Two knuckle neutral grip. Let's go for a little draw this time. Flat lead wrist for out and get the club catching up instead. Should start down the right, should draw a little bit. A little bit thin, but has started right and it's finding the line as well. Whew. Play all. Tiny bit thin that one, which is where the peak height's a little bit low. But you can see that my normal ball flight's around 30 to 32 peak height. Now this is where it gets fun and where you should be experimenting when you're practicing on the range and things like that. You now put in a wrist angle to try and take loft off and play around with handle back and forwards, you should be able to hit your other windows, your low fades and your low hooks. So low hooks at 
actually quite simple because we're twisting the loft off of this club anyway and it's closing the face and will draw. The hard bit about this is the low fade because you twist the loft off, you close the face. You need a lot of handle lean to get that face open again. And that's where this one is the toughest shot as well as the high draw. And this is what I'm doing with all my students. I'm trying to give them as many weapons on the golf course as possible for any situation. Whether they've got a strong grip, weak grip, neutral grip, we're getting them to understand their matchups of their wrist angles and what that might do for them. We're getting them to understand matchups of grip and wrist as well as shaft lean to give them more options because I want them to hit each window. And that is the real skill to this. And this is what I'm doing on the course vlogs that we watch on Mark's channel. If you don't watch them, make sure you head over and watch them. And any shot that I'm faced with, I'm thinking, right, what club do I need? What's the situation? How far have I got? How do I want that ball to land on the green? And then applying all of these thoughts, grip, wrist angles, shaft lean or not to get my desired ball flight. I hope I've explained that okay and it makes sense if not please do write in the comments down below and I'll either do another little video on it but hopefully that gives you a little insight into whether you've got the correct grip or not again personally I don't think there's a right or wrong but you can definitely be limiting yourself on what you can do if you've got one of the extreme grips you yourself have to work out what's right for you is a grip change to a neutral if you are one of these extreme grips worth it or whether it's just you having to find the weapons to help you around the golf course let me know in the comments what works for you and the tricks that you do to get your golf ball around the golf course in as low amount of shots as possible.